Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In a world filled with uncertainty, we find solace in the words of Psalm 91. Pastor Mensa Odebill reminds us that in times of trouble, we can turn to God for help. For God promises to be our refuge and fortress, our ever-present help in times of need. As we navigate life's challenges, we find strength in the assurance that God's angels are watching over us. With faith as our shield and trust as our anchor, we can face each day with courage and hope. Let Psalm 91 be our guide, reminding us that with God's help, we can overcome any obstacle. For in Him, we find our strength, our refuge, and our hope. Amen. I will say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Though I may be buffeted on every side, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Though I have no idea what comes next tomorrow, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I don't know where the next meal is coming from, but I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I don't know how this case will turn out, but I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. You have to be careful what you say in the presence of the Lord. Because sometimes we come to that place of safety in God, but everything we say is wrong. Ah, Lord, life is so hard. Things are so difficult. I don't think I can make it. I don't think there's hope for me. I don't think there's any way out. I don't think this thing will solve. Have you come to the secret place of the Most High? If you have come there, then what you say is not, I'm in trouble. What you say is, the Lord is my refuge. And then he says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. The one who defends me. Another name for fortress is stronghold. The Lord is my stronghold. Hmm. The term stronghold for the people of Israel was very strong because there were natural strongholds and then there were man-made strongholds. The, the man-made strongholds were the walls that they built around the city and the towers that they built in the walls. That's the natural strong, the man-made stronghold. But the natural stronghold were the mountains. And so they would say, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds me. They don't say, as the walls surround Jerusalem, but they say, as the mountains. Because the natural strongholds were stronger than the man-made ones. So whenever people were in trouble and they want to escape from danger, guess where they go to? To the mountains. Because the mountains were very high and if you know how to hide in the mountains, your enemy can't find you. If you read the, the Old Testament, you'll find that most times when people were trying to hide from danger, they go to the mountains. David went to the mountains when Saul was against him. In fact, even up to today, when guerrilla fighters want to hide from the bombs of armies, where do they go to? The mountains. There was one particular person who used to hide in a particular mountain ranges. And all the intelligence of the world and all the bombs found it so difficult to get him. Why? Because he was in the mountains. In fact, they only got him when he left the mountains and went to a home. 
So when the psalmist says the Lord is my refuge, he's not thinking about walls that have been built. The Lord is like the mountain in whom I hide. He is my fortress. And when you hide in the Lord, you are safe. Yes, people may even get you in the natural mountain. But when the Lord God is your fortress, your supernatural fortress, your supernatural stronghold, they will pursue you, but they will not get you. They will scout for you, but they cannot find you. They will send messengers for you, but it will not find you. They may throw arrows at you by day or by night, but it will not hit you because the Lord is your fortress. I don't know who your enemies are that you're so scared of. Because you know, we in Africa, we fear our enemies more than anything else. More than any problem, we fear enemies. And when we meet, we say enemies, we mean human beings who have spiritual armaments. Not from the most high God, from the most low devil. And although we trust in the most high God, we are afraid of the most low one. But the Lord is your fortress. He's your supernatural stronghold. Not man-made, not natural, supernatural. And he will protect you. I don't know what the world will throw at you. But you have a natural and supernatural protection from God. He's your fortress. He's your refuge. So when we say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, what should we expect from God? What does the Lord do for us when we stay in his secret place and under his shadow. Now, if you take a good look at the psalm, you'll notice that the language of verse 2 is different from the language of verse 3. The language of verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Then verse 3 says, the Lord will deliver you. So, verse 2 is first person. First person. is the person saying, I will say of the Lord. Verse 3 is third person. is somebody else speaking to the one who said, I will say of the Lord. So, it's not the person saying, speaking to himself. There is a voice of authority. And... That voice is a prophetic voice that comes from God. When you say, the Lord is my refuge, the Lord is my fortress, he speaks a prophetic word to you. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Who said that? Not the one who said, I will say of the Lord. This is a prophetic declaration from God. This is God allowing his prophetic word to come to you to tell you. Surely the Lord will deliver you. I believe that the message you are hearing this morning is in the tone of the verse 3. It is a word outside of yourself speaking the word of God to you saying surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the perilous pestilence. So what do we expect from God? Two. The Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Some of these Bible words are a bit difficult to understand in modern terms. What is a fowler? 
A fowler is a trapper. One who sets traps to catch birds. So that's a fowler. He sets traps for fowls. The snare of the fowler is the trap that the trapper sets to catch the bird. And the word to the psalmist is, the Lord will deliver you as a bird from the trap that has been set before you. The Lord will deliver you as a bird from the trap that has been set for you. The Lord will deliver, can deliver you in two ways. He can either order your steps so you don't fall into the trap. That's one way. But even when you fall into the trap, the Lord is able to spring your feet from the trap. I don't know what you are falling into, but the Lord will deliver you out of them. We used to sing a chorus in this church. My soul escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My soul escaped out of the snare of the fowler. I don't know what fowler is waiting for you tomorrow and next week, but your soul will escape from it. I don't know what fowler is waiting for you for the rest of 2021, but your soul will escape from it. Why? Because we are in the secret place of the Most High. We are under the shadow of the Almighty. We have taken refuge there. We abide there. We dwell there. We say to ourselves, the Lord is our refuge and our fortress. Therefore, we benefit from his protection. Your soul will escape. And then he says, the Lord will deliver you from the perilous pestilence. Other translations, the old King James says, the noisome pestilence. The pestilence is a piercing thing. It's, it's almost like an insect with piercing mouth or nose, whichever they use that pierces you and it is a symbol of things that make your life painful. They just hit you and hit you and hit you and bite you and hit you and hit you. God says he will deliver you from every dangerous attack that is aimed at you. So you look behind you, there are attackers but when you look to where you are you are in a safe place. And the safe place is called God's secret place. The safe place is the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord is the one under whose shadow you have come to take refuge. You've been pursued for so long. Find rest in the shadow. And when you get there, stop running. Stop running. Settle. Be confident in where God's presence is. And it's not a church. It's not a man of God. It's not a woman of God. It's not a pastor. It's not a bishop. It's not even a pope. It is Jehovah. We take refuge in him. Not in the ministry. You know, these days I hear people say things like, I tap into your grace. And they say that to a man of God. I hear people tell me, Pastor, I tap into your grace. My grace? My grace? What kind of craziness is that? We tap into God's grace. It is his grace that is sufficient for us. It is in his presence that there is refuge. Not my presence. I'm also seeking refuge. You say, Pastor, I want refuge from, from me. I'm also running to the Lord. Why don't we run together to the same place and trust the same Lord and be in his presence and have safety in his presence? 
he that abides not in the shadow of their church, not in the shadow of a ministry, not in the shadow of a man of God, but under the shadow of the Almighty, in the secret place of the Most High. That is where we abide. And in all the season where things are gyrating and turning and turning, I just want to point you to where you have to go to. So you find rest for your souls and settle in the Lord. Let your trust be in God. Let Jesus be your anchor. Trust in him. Settle in him. And he will deliver you from the noisome pestilence. And he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Let's rise up together. We just want to pray for a few minutes before we close. Wherever you are, this psalmist says, I will say of the Lord. So I want you to begin to say of the Lord, Lord, you are my refuge. Lord, you are my fortress. Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. I don't know what is pursuing you, but this morning, God, Jehovah, is bringing you deliverance. Help is coming from the presence of the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. Just pray and talk to the Lord. You are my refuge, Lord. You are my hiding place, Lord. You are my help. And because you are my help, I trust in you. You are the most high, Lord. You are higher than all my worry. You are higher than that letter I'm holding in my hand. You are higher than this report that I'm holding in my hand. You are higher than that woman who has threatened me and that man that has threatened me. You are higher, Lord, than all the authority of those who are pursuing me to destroy me. You are most high. Your word is superior to their word. Your word is higher than the word of any other entity. Your word is greater than any force that speaks. And so, Lord, I trust in you. You are the almighty, the mighty chested one, the mighty warrior, Lord. You fight and there is no enemy that can stand you. So, Lord, we hide behind you. We hide behind you and we trust in your warfare on our behalf. So we cease to fight our own battles, but to trust in you for the fight to be won. Say, it, Lord, I trust you. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Express your confidence in him. And whatever is pursuing you, I don't know what is pursuing you, but I have a deep sense in my spirit this morning that deliverance is coming, help is coming, deliverance is coming, help is coming, deliverance is coming, help is coming. It's coming in different forms. It's coming in deliverance from all kinds of stuff. It's coming in healings. It's coming in help in God providing and sustaining you. There is help coming. Just receive it from the presence of the Lord. Just receive it. Help is coming from God. Just say, Lord, I receive help from you. I receive deliverance from you. I receive deliverance from you. I receive help from you. I receive supply from you. I receive abundance from you. I receive an overflow from you. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Yes, that contract is coming to you. Just receive it. It's coming to you. It's yours. Nobody can take it away from you. It's yours. You are receiving it now in the name of Jesus. That favor is yours. Your name is on it. Oh, people want to steal it from you, but it's coming to you this morning. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That turn around has your name on it. That healing has your name on it. Deliverance has your name on it. Nobody can take it away from you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Say, 
So Father, we thank you this morning. You are our help. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is Jehovah Almighty, the Most High God. Our help is the Almighty, the big warrior. And so we declare over our lives, favor has come to us. Deliverance has come to us. There is massive answers to prayer. There is turn around of situations. I hear testimonies coming to you. I hear your voice testifying of God's favor. I hear you testifying of God's deliverance. I hear you celebrating God. I see you dancing. I hear the sound of laughter from your mouth. I hear the sound of laughter from your mouth. The joy of the Lord coming out of your mouth. Because the Lord is your help. He's your safety. And so Lord we declare all this victory. Because we know who you are. And our trust is resolutely fixed in you. In Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. Give the love some praise this morning. Oh yes. As you shout, you are declaring victory. As you shout, walls are coming down. As you shout, God is standing around the situation. In the name of Jesus, there is a sound of abundance of rain. And we give you praise, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, somebody. I said, Hallelujah, somebody. I said, Hallelujah, somebody. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin, and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!